Additional new hire class 22-015. And this is day four. So let's try it for the fourth time. How are we doing this morning? Woo! Awesome. Great. 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 Thank you. There Shout we out to Thank you. Nice. Shout out to Valencia. She made her first sale last night. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Get it, girl. <laughs> I'm trying to have so much more. Yes. Oh, that's so cool. That is awesome. Congratulations. So uh, let's see here. Who do we got on today? I see James. I see, well, who do I have in camera? I see Mary, Tony, Ken, Rachel, Rachel, Les, Sherry, Rachel, Foley, Valencia, Stacia, Abby, Stephen, Matt, Melissa. See a few other people in here, but they're not yet logged in, or at least their camera's not on. That would be Casey, Destiny, Morgan, Tiffany, James, Dominic. And I know I got an email from somebody saying that they wouldn't have their camera on, which is totally fine because you told me what the deal was. All right. Uh, I think we have a question. Destiny Shaw, is your hand up just because you're here or what's going on? I'm here, and I also sent you an email if you could check that out. Okay. Your yep. most convenient. I did. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, Matt, your hand is raised. What's going on? Hey, I just wanted to say your white shirt looks good today. <laughs> the white shirt. At least I'm consistent, <laughs> right? Okay. So, uh, you know, what, I'm sorry. Who said that they had a, a sale yesterday? Valencia, right? I don't know how you got a sale when you kept yourself on mute. Was, I'm impressed. <laughs> she must be talking to somebody else right now because uh, we can't hear her, but that's okay. It's all good. Uh, I'm sorry. So she, who knows about her sale? Who who knows about that? Anybody? Oh, I, I saw it on um, on uh, GroupMe last night. When we were doing our breakout, she said she, she had an appointment last night and she was uh, – you know, she was all excited about it, and, and she pulled it off. She nailed it. That is absolutely stellar. Valencia, can you hear me? I can. I'm sorry about that. What were you saying? Okay, so you're on mute. So tell me a little bit about this sale that you had last night. Oh, so um, a friend of mine, a high school friend of mine who lives here in Florida, um, we were discussing life insurance, and she said that uh, she wouldn't mind signing up through me. So last night we walked through, I walked through the whole process with Ryan Cunning, Cummings, I believe that's his name. Yeah. Yep. So I got to see the whole process of filling out like a whole policy going through EAP and all of those things last night, which were pretty cool. So was that sale put under your agent ID or was it put under Ryan's? It was put underneath mine. I have my license. I have everything all set to go. My agent number, I have everything. So it was oh, put underneath awesome. my name. So you yep. have now done what's called a uh, coded, C-O-D-E-D. -E -D. Mm. And what that means is you've had your very first sale. So everybody in the organization now knows you had your first sale. So that's great. Woo! Yay, I'm that excited. Is, as you should be. That's absolutely awesome. Okay, I sent everybody the DRB form. So please submit your DRB report so that I can get all that data and I'm gonna prepare for us to watch our video. So just give me a second, we'll throw that video up and then we'll start looking at what we're doing for the rest of today. <laughs> all right, better market thing. The veteran market module is intended to give you a clear picture of the clients that you'll be servicing and the organizations that they belong to. So here's what you need to take away from this module. Number one, what defines a veteran and what are they covered for and entitled to through the VA? Number two, what a veteran service organization is. And number three, how do we market to veterans? A veteran by statute is defined as a person who served in the active army, 
Navy, Air Force, Marines, or Coast Guard, and was discharged as other than dishonorable. Now, there's currently over 20.4 million veterans across the country, making the veteran market almost one and a half times the size of the entire union market that the company began marketing to in the 50s. Our target senior demographic of veterans between the ages of 60 to 75 alone boasts more than 10 million, or a little under half of the veteran population. What's more exciting than just the number of veterans that exist is the opportunity to protect each one of those veterans' families and cl close relations through the sponsorship program provided through AIL. Every veteran not only in most cases always knows another veteran, but also may have a brother or sister or friend that they're able to extend their business to. You may be asking yourself with that many veterans, well, where are they all located at? Well, in Washington state, there's over 560,000 veterans. In Oregon, there's over 300,000. In California, has over 1.6 million. Arizona, over 500,000. In Texas, over 1.5 million. In Minnesota, over 320,000. In Wisconsin, over 360,000. Virginia, over 720,000. North Carolina, over 730,000. Tennessee, over 470,000. And that's not even all the territories that we cover and serve as veterans in. What an incredible opportunity that you have to work in this special market. Now, to put this in perspective for how big your opportunity is, let's take a state like Washington. It has over 560,000 veterans, with 397 of those being between the ages of 20 to 69 or 71 percent. It would take 25 agents averaging 12 presentations per week or 300 presentations in total. It would take those 25 agents almost 39 years to see every veteran in their family in Washington. Now that's just one state with 25 agents and you have access and the exclusive in AO to the whole country. Now, if that's not opportunity unlimited, I don't know what is. Now let's talk about what they're covered for. Burial in a VA National Cemetery includes an assigned grave site, if space is available, opening and closing of the grave, grave liner for casket remains, headstone or marker, and finally, care at no cost to the family. Now, the easiest way to understand that is everything before the cemetery gates, the veteran and their family is responsible to take care of. If they're buried in a state or national cemetery, the VA will take care of everything past the cemetery gate. Now, the U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs benefits does not cover all of the funeral or cremation arrangements of honorably discharged veterans. They get up to $300 for a burial allowance if at the time of death, they were entitled to receive a pension. They receive up to $762 for a burial allowance if the death occurs in a VA facility, up to $762 for a burial allowance if their burial in a cemetery is not under U.S. governmental jurisdiction, discharged from active duty because of a disability incurred in the line of duty, or they die in a VA facility, up to $2,000 for service-related deaths, and veterans' caskets are not free unless the death occurs while on active duty. Now, I know if you're like me, you feel the same way that I do. That's just not enough to take care of their funeral or final expenses for them, let alone their families. But that is where you come in. And your ability to complete this training effectively will be crucial to helping and educate and protect our nation's veterans. If you happen to encounter an active duty veteran member or spouse, it's important to know what life insurance they are covered for. It's called SGOI, or Service Members Group Life Insurance. Every active duty member is covered for $400,000 of term life insurance for the period of active duty and for an additional 120 days after separation or release from duty. Now, SGOI can be converted to VGOI, or Veterans Group Life Insurance, for up to the full 400,000 of renewable term life insurance if full-time SGLI was in place when they separated. If the veteran applies for VGLI within 240 days of separating, they don't have to qualify medically. Outside of that, they have a year and 120 days to apply and qualify medically. Otherwise, VGLI is not available to the veteran. Now, please review the module materials to see the details and the rates and coverages for VGLI and so that you can get the facts and utilize them throughout the presentation, which you'll see in later modules. 
Now that you know what defines a veteran and how many they are and what they're covered for, let's talk about the organizations that support them. The groups that we work with and also service veterans are called VSOs or Veteran Service Organizations. The three major VSOs are the American Legion, the Veterans of Foreign Wars, and finally the AMVETS, totally in over 3.85 million members across the US. Now, once you know the structure of one of them, you know the structure for all of them. So we're gonna focus on the VFW, which is the second largest of the big three VSOs, with 1.6 million members. Now, the VFW represents combat veterans that had boots on the ground overseas for more than 30 days. Along with the VFW, there's an auxiliary to that organization. Now, these auxiliary members are not actual veterans themselves. And in many cases, they are the wives or husbands, sons or daughters of a veteran. The auxiliary's purpose is to help support and transition veterans back into civilian life once they've separated from service. Spouses, dependents, and survivors are eligible for a presidential memorial certificate, a burial flag, and surviving spouses and children, they may be eligible for burial in a national cemetery, even if they pre-decease the veteran. For the most up-to-date figures and numbers, be sure to visit www.cem.va.gov. To give you a better picture of VSOs and their impact, let's check out a video that shows what happened in the VFW organization in recent years. <clears throat> the VFW's 121st year was marked by challenges like none we have seen before, yet we did not falter. The call for help was unrelenting, and our members remained determined to serve during a time of great need. On July 24th, 2020, Hal Roche II was installed as National Commander-in-Chief during a change of command ceremony at VFW National Headquarters. A US Air Force veteran who served in operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm, Commander Roche understood the value of resolve, resilience, and adapting to the situation at hand. All things he commended VFW members for as they stepped up to help during the COVID-19 crisis. In casting his 2020 vision for veterans, Commander Roche called on each of us to stay committed to the VFW's mission and continue growing membership in the nation's largest combat veterans organization. As the pandemic created or heightened hardships, the VFW found new ways to accomplish that mission. Limited in-person interaction moved more opportunities online through events such as the Facebook Live discussion with U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs officials on resources for veterans facing homelessness and a live virtual chat with Medal of Honor recipient, Thomas Payne. We even launched Still Serving, the VFW podcast as one more way to connect with our communities and highlight critical issues and legislation affecting veterans, service members, and military families worldwide. And we've stayed on top of threats to veterans benefits, such as the rise of VA claim sharks, these unaccredited companies make unrealistic promises regarding help with VA claims, and they keep a portion of a veteran's disability compensation as payment for assistance that accredited VFW service officers provide at absolutely no charge to the veteran. VFW posts and members also adapted to life in the pandemic by holding virtual events, along with safely serving fellow veterans and their communities. At every level of the organization, service and camaraderie have illustrated that the VFW is a lifeline for veterans, their families, and communities. Primarily through virtual meetings, the VFW persevered on the front lines of vital legislative battles on Capitol Hill. Nothing stopped us from fighting for education, jobs, health care, and better quality of life for veterans as we made the voices of our members heard. The VFW proposed the Digital GI Bill upgrade to bring VA education services into the 21st century. 
This would improve veterans' access to timely and accurate processing as they complete an education. We also pushed for more assistance for service-disabled veterans and those facing housing issues, reflecting our desire to see all veterans secure employment and economic opportunities. The VFW advocated for more progress in healthcare for women veterans, including continued needs to eliminate harassment and assault and address a lack of facilities and providers for gender-specific services. The VFW expressed support for HR 344, the Women Veterans Transitional Residents Utilizing Support and Treatment Trust Act, which would identify the need for women-specific drug and alcohol dependency treatment and rehabilitation programs through VA. VFW service officers remain steadfast in their efforts to secure the benefits and compensation America's veterans earned and deserve. Our accredited VFW service officers and VFW National Veterans Service set another fiscal year record, recovering more than $9.7 billion in VA disability compensation benefits for nearly 550,000 veterans. One of the most urgent concerns for the VFW was toxic exposures. Men and women who've worn our nation's uniform and served in dangerous environments need the care and benefits America promised. They've sacrificed, but too many have been left to suffer as they waited years or decades for benefits, or worse yet, were denied care. Commander Roche demanded Congress take action during the first ever all virtual testimony before the House and Senate Committees on Veterans Affairs. He provided a plan that would establish an independent commission to identify toxic exposures and environmental hazards, evaluate scientific evidence on health conditions and toxic exposures, and obligate the VA to accept toxic exposure claims for the sake of veteran care, regardless of the cost. Toxic exposure for our troops has been synonymous with service for more than 100 years. But every time we're faced with it, we act as, it's never, as if it's never happened before. A comprehensive system for taking care of our troops exposed to hazards is long past due. The VFW demands that Congress works in a bipartisan manner with the veteran service organizations to develop a comprehensive solution for toxic exposure. We must create a framework that will take care of all past, present, and future generations of veterans. Again, that is long overdue. Right now, the burden of proof falls too heavily on veterans. A new framework to determine presumptive service connection is necessary. The VFW continues to urge Congress to pass reforms. We emphatically support the Comprehensive and Overdue Support for Troops Cost of War Act and the Honoring Our Pact Act currently under consideration. The lives of veterans are at stake. These advocacy efforts reflected the VFW's 2021 priority goals and the legislative battles that must be won for veterans and their families. The VFW provided several artifacts and personal effects to the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency as part of its promise to help advance POW MIA missions. B.J. Lawrence, Executive Director, VFW Washington Office, met with DPAA Director Kelly McKay to hand over items from VFW members. Shortly after, Secretary of Defense Mark Esper delivered several of these items to the Vietnamese government as a show of goodwill from the U.S. The VFW Foundation proudly celebrated its 25th anniversary. To mark the occasion, the city of Kansas City, Missouri presented Resolution 25, the Veterans of Foreign Wars Foundation Day Resolution. VFW Foundation Board Secretary Treasurer and VFW Quartermaster General Deborah Anderson and other representatives attended the virtual meeting to accept the resolution. With the generous support of our wonderful and loyal corporate partners, the VFW made a positive difference for Americans of every generation. Patriotic middle and high school students received more than $208,000 in scholarships and awards as the VFW named the national winners of its 2021 Voice of Democracy and Patriots Pen competitions. The VFW hosted its first ever virtual parade of winners live on Facebook. The event, 
sponsored by Twisted X, recognized all state winners of the Voice of Democracy competition, as well as the National Voice of Democracy and Patriots 10 winners. VFW National Commander Hal Roche, VFW Auxiliary President Sandy Onstwetter, and Twisted X President Kassad Reddy traveled to Rochester, Minnesota to present 2021 National Voice of Democracy winner Aaron Grace Stokig with the first place $30,000 T.C. Selman Memorial Scholarship Award. Sponsored by VFW Post 1215 in Rochester and its auxiliary, her winning essay on this year's theme, Is This the Country the Founders Envisioned, inspired us to share in a vision of progress that has passed on to future generations. Today, almost 80% of the U.S. population is eligible to vote, and our union is far more perfect for it. But what about that last 20%? Who is left? The children. Your children. Because you, just as the founding fathers and ships full of immigrants before you, are tasked with protecting the future. In addition to a college scholarship, the VFW surprised all of the Voice of Democracy state winners when it announced they would also receive a new laptop, courtesy of Dell. Also featured during the virtual award ceremony was the 2021 Patriots Pen first place winner, Wyatt Perkins. Sponsored by VFW Post 4221 in Lake Portland, North Dakota, Perkins was awarded $5,000. He delivered his winning essay on the theme, What is Patriotism to Me?, and discussed how he raised donations for a local food pantry to help during the pandemic. 158 student veterans from around the country were named recipients of the VFW's Sport Clips Help a Hero Scholarship for the fall 2020 semester. Another 160 student veterans were awarded scholarships for the spring 2021 semester. Together, these groups received nearly $1.4 million in assistance. In addition, the VFW and Sport Eclipse Haircuts teamed up for the first ever virtual VFW Sport Eclipse Help a Hero Walk, offering supporters a new way to engage with the Help a Hero campaign. It was a huge success and raised just over the $1 million goal. To date, $8 million in scholarships have been awarded through this program. The VFW is grateful for Sport Clip's ongoing support for veterans' higher education needs. The pandemic couldn't stop 300 Burger King franchisees from raising critical funds for the VFW's Unmet Needs program. In the 14th year for the campaign, participating restaurants asked customers to donate to the program with their purchase and help prevent circumstances such as hunger and homelessness. Since 2007, Burger King franchisees have raised more than $6 million for this vital program. To date, Unmet Needs has awarded more than $12 million to nearly 11,000 service members, veterans, and their families since 2004. Ace Hardware collaborated with the VFW again to give away 1 million American flags to honor men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Customers who visited a participating ACE store received a free American flag. A second flag was then donated to a local VFW post to be used for decorating veterans' graves on Memorial Day. The VFW joined forces with Team Red, White, and Blue. This opened the door for organizing more virtual and local opportunities aimed at connecting veterans through physical wellness and social activities. Some things changed due to COVID-19 but the VFW's enduring spirit of service did not. It was on display as members helped fellow veterans and their communities. The Still Serving campaign, which began right before the pandemic, took on deeper significance as it became a vehicle to share the ways veterans rose to the challenges at hand. VFW posts and members conducted buddy checks, food and blood drives, PPE distributions, and much more in the face of this invisible enemy. After a year filled with difficulties, the VFW and its membership emerged stronger than ever. Just as we have for more than a century, we stayed true to our mission, relentlessly fought for veterans to get the benefits they earned and deserve, and brought hope to people across the country. We demonstrated that we never give up and that veterans represent the best of America. We are still serving. 
we are resilient. And we are proud to say we are the veterans of foreign wars and no one does more for veterans. Wow, what an amazing organization to partner with on the state level to educate and protect our nation's veterans. Now that you have the understanding of what a veteran is covered for and entitled to, as well as what a veteran service organization's role is, now let's explore the marketing and mailing process. Let's start with AIL's process. The marketing process to a veteran service organization is the same as how unions and other associations are marketed to. An AIL public relations representative will reach out to a VSO's leadership, such as a quartermaster, a state adjutant, or a commander. Once a virtual or in-person meeting is scheduled, an initial explanation of what AIL can offer the group's leadership is presented. Once the decision maker is on board, they have presented it to their board and get final approval. Once approved, a contract between the group or what's called a TG is signed, and a coverage amount is put in place on all members. A letter and a beneficiary reply card is created, and the decision maker's signature is put on the final artwork and letter. Once everything is finalized, the entire membership is mailed. The response cards are received by home office and they are data entered. They are then routed to AO and loaded into our system for you to call on. Now, that marketing process I just described built the company since 1951 and has continued to provide resources to associates to this day. But innovation is what drives AO. And AO partnered with a company called Lead Lab to bolster and support growth. This marketing process takes the best practices of what the company has been doing since 1951 and then applies it to current technology and goes straight to the veterans through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, allowing veterans that don't belong to veteran service organizations to get access to the same benefits. Once a veteran responds uh, to one of the social media platforms for a no-cost burial and will kit for veterans and their families, they are sent two emails. One, a confirmation email, and the other, an email informing them of an agent of American Income Life will be reaching out to them. The amazing part of this marketing process is that all veterans are covered for the same benefits. So whether you see them through a VSO, like the VFW, or you see them through an online response through the lead lab, our products and services will always make sense for every veteran family you see. You know, this market is special and unique, and you should want to hold yourself to the highest level of professionalism to give the veterans and the families you service the best possible experience. Your knowledge of veteran issues as well as coverages is so important to connecting with veterans virtually. Now be sure to watch this video as many times as you need to solidify what you've learned and get the most out of your training. All right, <clears throat> way to go Andrew Haskins, way to start us off. <clears throat> I'm so sorry, I have this cough. <clears throat> Nothing's wrong with me, but I just have this weird cough for the last two classes. All right, anyway, what do we got going on today? Let's find out from Tony Ray. Tony, what am I supposed to be going over today? Ah, I guess probably more phone script training. Um, let's see, what else you got here? Thursday. Yeah, phone, hot seat, and rebuttals, mm -hmm. and dialing with the manager and work on presentation. That's on the syllabus. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So we know we have that we got to do. Anything else in class that I'm supposed to be doing today? Trying to scroll through my all my stuff here. Agent packet. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Pardon me. So if we look at the AO International New Agent Packet on page 18, we watch the market video. We're going to go into breakout rooms. We're going to practice. And then you all are going to elect a couple of people to practice with me. And if they nail it as they represent the group, then we don't need to practice anymore. However, 
If they don't, then we'll practice some more. <laughs> so today is all about the uh, phone scripts. So while I'm waiting for that to come up, let me ask by a show of hands, since we all know now how to do the, uh, you know, raise your hand on Zoom. How many of us made phone calls yesterday? I see, I see, I see one. India Jones, thank you so much. You're so awesome. I appreciate that. How many calls did you make yesterday, India? Is that the same as listening to a call? No. <laughs> uh, well, my hand is back there. Okay, so whoo, bring it back down. No problem. So it doesn't look like anybody made phone calls. All right, and that's not the end of the world, right? So walk me through your day yesterday, Mary. Once you left with me at the end of our training course, what did you do? Well, mainly we just practice different scenarios of the PAV or the RC vet and the PA vet. Um, did some rebuttals, tried to mix it up a little bit, had some fun with it. Mm -hmm. And that took four hours? Actually, I left a little early, but then came back on later that evening mm -hmm. and watched some, um, I watched, oh, what was his name? Brandon Neal do a over $300,000 sale, which was pretty fun to watch. I'm sorry, um, he did a what sale? He did a really big sale. It's like the, the life. It um, probably wasn't 300000 though, right? No, no. Um, <laughs> but 3000 would be good. Yeah, yeah, it was a little over, it was over 100000 but the... Help me understand, how do you get to 100000 What, do you sell like nine people all at once? No, he sold, well, I guess what the people will be paying in, what they're what they would get if something happened to them would be in 300 and Oh, I see. Thousand. So the coverage amount was 300000 Yeah, the okay. coverage amount. Sorry. Perfect. So what we want you to do, whenever you talk about what was sold or what you observed, talk about the ALP, the annualized life premium. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So, you know, $1,500 sale, $2,000 sale, $3,000 sale with, you know, five references or five referrals or five sponsorships. That's kind of how the lingo is when we talk about uh, when somebody sells something. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Nope. That's good. Uh, Casey Neal, tell me about your day yesterday after you left me. Sorry, I'm having some connectivity issues. I keep having to get up. Yesterday, we um, went through the phone scripts whenever we got with our uplinks. We did a really good job. I got to tell you, we were punishing each other. We really were. We came strong with those rebuttals. Everybody on my team did a very amazing job. I'm very proud of them. Nice. And who is your upline? My upline is um, uh, John. Hodges, James Hodges. Yeah, well, no, it's Eric Stater, and then it's uh, John Curry. Yeah, okay, yeah. Thank you for the. Sure. thank you for the help there. I forgot his last name for a minute. Not a problem. <laughs> Yeah, but they're okay. really awesome. They work with us so well. They really push us to get out of our comfort zone and, you know, to try to discover, you know, our strengths and weaknesses. And they, you know, really focus on our strengths, but also our weaknesses to help cultivate us to be the best that we can be. Like, I literally have nothing but good things to say about them. Great. Well, I'm glad to hear that uh, you were able to do that. Abby Edwards, tell me about your day yesterday. I was on the same call as Mary. So we... We practiced phone scripts. Um, our upline Ardian was there and he was, well, he was popping in and out because he was making some of his own calls. Mm -hmm. So he answered any questions we had, actually gave us like a some examples. While mm -hmm. we were practicing and giving each other rebuttals, he, or we would have a question, like <laughs> Mary actually was, did a rebuttal or a, uh, made a comment that her husband died yesterday. And I was trying to like figure out how to work with that. <laughs> do I go forward? What do I say? And so, what did they tell you to do? Uh, he said, say like first off, like 
here are my condolences. Like, I'm so sorry that that happened. Um, if you feel like you're able or whatever right now to talk about this, this is an important thing for us to talk about, but I totally understand if you want me to call back next week or yeah, later. Absolutely. Okay, good stuff. All right, let me just go through the attendance real quick, <clears throat> make sure that I've identified everybody that's here or excused. So if I don't call your name and you're here, you gotta speak out and let me know once I'm done, okay? So Dominic, Matthew, Tony, Mary, Abigail, Sherry, Destiny, <laughs> Casey, Rachel, uh, Rachel, <laughs> Rachel Foley, Rachel, Rachel, uh, Melissa, Stacia, Tiffany, Gupret, Stephen, Morgan, India, Valencia, Ken Rich, Leslie, and Jerry Hendrickson. Is there anybody here I did not say? <laughs> All right, awesome. So I got that done. That's great. Okay. So uh, today is what day? Thursday? It's day four, right? <clears throat> and day four, you need to start making phone calls. I'm just letting you know that. And the reason why I say that <clears throat> is because there's nothing like actually making phone calls to practice the phone scripts. So we're going to practice today, and you practiced last night, but you're going to get really bored of that. You actually have to make calls and try to talk to people and book deals. So for all of us, did your upline, field training, essay, whoever, did they tell you how they're going to give you leads in order to make calls? Anybody? Yeah, we talked to Artie last night, and he said we're going to start calling tonight. He's going to give us his lead book, his brother Christian's lead book, um, and we're going to start making some calls. Okay, did he tell you how to put the... Uh... You know, once you make a phone call, how are you supposed to market? Did they walk you through that or are they going to do that tonight? I think they're going to do that. They did not do it last night. So tonight okay, I must no So if he doesn't tell you, what are the only two categories that I want you to mark once you hit the call button? Ooh, I don't recall. So don't have time. Wrong number. And, and no answer. And no answer. No answer. Very good. That's awesome. If they tell you something different, that's fine because that's their lead pack. But if they don't give you direction, then only do that, okay? And before you make the call, make sure you understand what their schedule is so that you can book them. Uh, the worst thing in the world is to try to talk to the upline to find out what their schedule is when you actually have somebody on the phone saying, yeah, I'll meet with them. So I'll get that ahead of time, okay? All right, got a tennis done, got that done. We are going to break out. We know there's three different scripts, right? You have their return card or the response card, whatever they want to call that. You have the Pavit script. What's the other script we have, Morgan? Sorry, my mouse wasn't connecting. It's the veteran referral script, right? Yes, the veteran referral script, exactly. All right, so there's 23 of us minus two should be 21. I know that we got some folks that are remote and they can't actually put their cameras on, but that's fine. They should be able to uh, do the script because it's a phone call. We don't necessarily have to see everybody, okay? So I'm gonna put you in the breakout rooms and we're gonna start that process right now. I will join the breakout rooms and kind of listen in and maybe provide some feedback. When we're done, we'll bring everybody back and you can uh, put your best in front of me. All right, we're bringing everybody back. There's Rachel Foley. There's Destiny Schaff, who doesn't want to have her camera on. Destiny, we need to see your camera. Come on now. If I got to show this ugly mug, we can see your face. Destiny Schaff. Um, do we remember yeah. we spoke about this this morning? Yeah, I do remember. You're right. Thank I you. I forgot the name. <laughs> that happens. Uh, it does. Crazy. That's okay. Thank you. So many people. Okay. India, Clevin Bell join us. Hey, Clevin, I hope everything got taken care of. Tony's there, Stacy is there, Stephen, Les, Dominic is by the phone. Jacob Kreider, Critter, Kreider, Dupreet, and someone else. Valencia, the one who sold today, the one who has the lead on the entire class. That is awesome. 
All right, so we're back. Has everybody, can you show hands, has everybody done the referral phone script? Everybody's done that, because that's probably the most difficult one, right? So Destiny says it, Sherry says it. Okay, I'm gonna raise their hand, that's good, I appreciate that. So we're gonna practice more, but we're gonna take a break, and then we're gonna talk about how to overcome objections when we're on the phone call. I try to set an appointment, okay? We're going to take about a 10 minute break. So come back at 10 minutes after the hour. Thank you. And we're back. Hello, everybody. Let's see if we can't get back into it. Clevin Bell, uh, did you get a chance to submit your DRB? No. Can you do that for me? Uh, can you repost the link? Yeah. Absolutely, more than happy to. Just want to make sure we catch up with everybody's information and have it as accurate as possible for the entire class. And I don't know if it's my computer or yours, but I'm not seeing your video. It's your computer. Well, I don't know. Anybody else can see me? Yes. Okay. So, Tony, I'm going to have to say it's yours. Because I'm here. I'm live. Because I haven't seen you since we the breakout room. Oh, really? At the AO training auditor, the other one with his face on it, but his video is working. You may have to um, leave the meeting and come back to it, maybe. Mm. Okay. All right, so what are we going to go over now? We're going to talk about rebuttals because I've done it to a certain extent, right? Chatting with you guys in general, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, or at least when I jump into the, to the rooms and I give you some uh, rebuttals. But here are some actual rebuttals that we can use when we're chatting with members or members families and they're telling us eh, maybe i don't want to do this or maybe i do so this is a veteran phone rebuttals and it was uh included in the day one email okay so the first one hey can you just mail it to me i mean i've had that happen to me a bunch of times right well of course any of the physical forms you need will in fact be mailed to you my job is just to find time for the representative walk you through the benefits on zoom first to answer any questions you and your spouse have, all right? Or if you're doing it for you, then it's just, hey, my job is to make sure that we find time to go over the benefits on Zoom. When we're done, everything will be emailed to you afterward because that's what happens, right? We went through the presentation. We know we're gonna email, email them at least the family information guide, the will kit and the three important facts, right? If they buy something, then they also will get the policy summary right? I already know my benefits. Oh, great. And that's going to actually make this go quicker. Let's just get everything out and set up for you that as a veteran, you're entitled to receive. So it should be very straightforward if somebody's telling you, I already know, I already got it. I'm good. Right? You can just go through that process and get it done early. I don't want to buy anything. A lot of times people will know that you're probably going to try to sell something. I already have insurance. Okay. I understand that's exactly why I'm here. Remember these benefits are what you already have. My job is just to find a time to deliver them to you. Because that's true, right? We're actually going to give them that which they're already entitled to. Hey, I don't have the time right now. I can't do this right now. What I do when I get in that situation is I tell them, well, I'm sorry, I know I'm calling you out of the blue. I'm not actually calling to do the delivery now. I'm just calling to set up a time that we can do the Zoom call. And what they say here in the rebuttal say, hey, I understand, give me 30 seconds so I can tell you what I'm going to do for you. That way you can decide if it's worth your time or not. I don't like to give that option to somebody. That's just me. Well, hey, give me 30 seconds. I'm, all I'm going to do is set up a time for us to speak later. Oh, okay. Yeah, what, what do you got? Oh, we're going to do a Zoom call, right? Boom. You can do the whole thing in 30 seconds. I don't have internet. I don't have a way to live. You'd be surprised the number of people will tell you they don't have internet. And they probably don't. They live rural or maybe they don't pay for it. But most people have a cell phone, right? And if they don't have internet, then maybe their family, their children, relatives, maybe they do that way. They had to have internet in order to submit the request to us, at least on the Pavet. 
The only times where people might not have internet completely is going to be on the return card or and or if they're a referral, right? I don't remember requesting anything. I think I did this today with a couple of the groups, right? I don't remember requesting anything. What are you talking about? Maybe my wife filled it out, something like that. So Abby, can you read to us what you say if somebody says, I don't remember requesting anything? Do you remember filling out that card? No? Okay, just to confirm I'm talking to the right person, the information submitted is, and then does this number receive text messages? Right. So there you go. It's really straightforward, right? You're using the information you already have to build that credibility factor that you want to establish with them. Whether it's on the PABIT and you're saying, hey, uh, I got your email address. Is it yada, yada, yada? And your security keyword was X, Y, and Z. If it's the return card, hey, you named Jill as your beneficiary, right? And your birthday was X, Y, and Z. If they confirm both of those, then you know you're talking to the right person, all right? Hey, I don't want to do this. This isn't something I'm interested in. Shockingly enough, on the PAVIT, I've had that happen multiple times. And that's because on the PAVIT, what people are doing is they are actually online, usually on Facebook, they see something that might be of interest and then they click it. And what they're expecting to receive is maybe an email with a bunch of information or snail mail. And all of a sudden you've got Sam calling you on the phone trying to set up a phone call. Some of those people will go, you know what? No, no, I don't want to do that. So all we have you do because it's a protected market, right? We don't want to upset the veterans. And we just say, hey, your representative uh, will go everything that you're covered for and entitled to receive. My job is just to find a time for us to do the benefit delivery. Hey, that's exactly why I'm here. I'm not trying to sell anything. I want to get the benefits out to you that you want, right? Uh, you're not trying to sell me anything, are you? Boom. Does my spouse have to be there? So let me ask you, Rachel Foley, does the spouse have to be there? Yes, because the benefits apply to them as well. Right, but does the spouse have to be there? Yes, because we want to go over everything with them. Uh, huh? Okay. Well, sure, that's the response back. But everyone keep in mind that this does the spouse actually have to be there in order to get the benefits? No. No, no right? But we don't want to say that. Because obviously we want the decision makers there at the same time. So what Rachel said is exactly right. A, the benefits apply to them as well. I want to make sure that they get the information. Now, if they push back and say, well, you know, they work all the time. I'm the only one here. Then, you know, you got to roll with that and decide if that's where you want to do it. I have some agents that will not sit with people unless their spouse is there. They just refuse to do it. I will sit with folks, even if their spouse isn't there, if they convince me that their spouse will not be there in the next two days. So it's entirely up to you how you want to do it. The likelihood of you selling at the highest level will occur when both spouses are there. Okay, just so you know. All right, uh, Pavet, uh, what that means is it's a veteran market and the name of the company that does the marketing for us has the initials of PA. I forget the actual name of the company. And so what we did is whenever we signed that deal with them and we moved that lead through our system, we named it PA Vet. And that tells us that that's the burial and will kit um, marketing that we do on Facebook as it comes through. People want their will kit and the information about their burial benefits. So that's what PA Vet is for. Okay. All right, so what I want to hear now when we jump in and we're practicing this is I want to hear these objections. So whoever is not making the phone call, I want you to provide an objection why you don't want to do this or something like that. And I want everyone else to have these uh, rebuttals up so that you can attempt to overcome these objections. All right, we're going to do this for a while and then we're going to come back. And when we come back, whoever is the top person in each group is going to go up against me. Or maybe I'll be the one that will call if I'm in a charitable mood. You guys can see how I do it. And then you can grade me. If I don't do well, then you call me out. Man, you know that I think about it. Maybe I won't do it because I don't want to call me <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, we're going to go back into the breakout rooms and we're going to get it all done from that perspective. I'll see you guys on the other side. Okay, and we're back. Everyone's coming back. We're going to do a recap. And then I'm going to let you all go. Uh, let's see. Who thinks that they were the absolute best at the referral script? 
Oh, Abby, I see you raised your hand. That's outstanding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Who thinks they were the I'm absolute kidding. best? Tony Ray, you thought you were the best? Really? Oh, Tony, I would have picked you, but you don't know how to use your mute button. <laughs> you can't have been the best. I wouldn't say I was the best, but uh, oh, okay. I gave it a oh. whirl. Somebody volunteered Kenny. Kenny, were you? Who's Kenny? Ken. Ken, were you the absolute best? I was decent. You were. But there's decent. a lot of superstars in here for me to just go absolute best. Oh my gosh. All right. So somebody in here thinks that they're a superstar. Somebody has enough confidence to step up to the plate, right? Somebody, please. Anybody? Hey, I'll give it a shot. No, no, give it a shot. There's not, no, that's not confident. That's just saying I'll take one for the team. <laughs> Morgan Black for thinks he's absolute best in the class. I don't think I'm the best. I think there's always room for improvement, but I will give it a go. Let's do this. So okay. you All got right. this, Morgan. Woo! Ready? All right. So good afternoon, Samuel. I'm sorry, who is this? Hi, my name is Morgan. I'm with the Veteran Service Division of American Income. I'm How are you? One of them don't dress her. Oops, sorry. That was my roommate, Morgan. You got to start over because I don't know what the heck you're saying. Oh, totally understand. We have a house full over here too. So my name is Morgan. I'm with the Veteran Service Division of American Income. How are you today? The, the what? You're with who? So the Veteran Service Division of American Income, I'm calling. Oh, the VA. I got you. You know, I have a bone to pick with the VA because I submitted a medical claim and they still haven't done it. So can you give me the number to the VA so I can get that taken care of? Um, before we're off the phone, I can Google that for you. But what I'm actually calling about is regarding the burial and will kits for veterans and their families that your nephew Brian has extended to you. Did he tell you I'd be calling? My no good nephew, Brian, you got to be kidding me. Oh, I'm sorry you feel that way. He spoke so highly of you when I got to meet with him. Is he still in the Army? Yes. Uh, oh, he actually no, joined the Marine Corps, so obviously you didn't talk to Brian. Oh, if I would have had a proper referral card, <laughs> I would know what service. So, okay. So, all right, let's back up. So... Where do you want me to start from? Oh, so you failed. You, you're done. You're I done. Did. You I did. You, you got me. I, I didn't know you were going to throw that at me. Can I get okay. a service? Casey Neal. Casey Neal. That was dirty. Casey I know. Let well, me go well, again. No, no. Casey Neal. Oh. You need to save the day for Morgan. Ring, ring. Hello. Hi, Samuel. Yeah. Well, Samuel, my name is Casey. I'm with the Veteran Division of American Income. How are you? I'm fine. Why are well, you I'm calling? You that. do know it's 730 at night, right? We just sat down to dinner. Oh, well, I did not intend this is to. not a good dinner. time. Well, you, you just go ahead and give me about 15 to 30 seconds and I'll be out of your way. I did not intend to disrupt y'all's dinner. I hope it's delicious, by the way. Now I'm calling regarding the burial guide and will kit for veterans, their friends and family that your cousin Jake extended to you. Now, did he tell you I would be calling? My cousin Jake. No, he didn't tell me anything. Are you actually trying to sell me something? I just said we're sitting down for dinner. You're going to have to call me later. Well, I'm actually just calling to get you set up so that we could go run through your benefits and allow you to be able to understand what it is that you're entitled to. <clears throat> now, um, I'm, uh, he didn't tell you I was calling. Well, I'm going to have to give him a call about that. He was supposed to let you know, but that's okay. I'll back up and fill you in on what's going on. Now, I recently met with Jake and got him established with his veteran benefits. Now, we were able to extend a few of those benefits that are typically only available to service members to their closest friends and family. Well, I'm Jake not a wanted, veteran, so I can't do that. Well, Jake wanted to make sure that I got these benefits out to you. You should definitely thank him because most of the time these are only available to veterans, but because of his choice, we were able to extend it to you as well. Yeah, but I just told you I'm not a veteran. 
Well, you don't have to be a veteran to receive these benefits. These can be extended to their friends and family from veterans. And he thought highly enough of you to give you uh, give me your contact information so I could reach out and get you signed up. Okay, so Morgan, do you think that she saved your bacon? Yes, I do. All right, Morgan, go ahead. Okay. okay. So, did he tell you I would be calling? I'm sorry, I just answered the phone. Who is this? Oh, my name is Morgan with the Veteran Service Division of American Income. How are you today? The Veteran Service Division of yeah. what? Of American Income. We help distribute the VA burial and will kits and their families that your nephew Brian extended to you. Did he tell you I'd be calling? Yeah, he sent me a text, but he just said some guy would be calling me sometime this week. Okay. Are you that well, guy? Well, I'm, I am that guy. So the reason I am calling, okay. So the reason I am calling is to set a time to go over those benefits that you're entitled to. Mm -hmm. Now your benefits cover both you and a spouse. Do you have a spouse or significant other? Well, does that make a difference? Or am I not going to get the benefits because I either have or don't have a spouse? So if you do have a spouse or significant other, someone that you share financial responsibilities with throughout the household, live together separate, um, these benefits do help them as well. So then you have a plan when that day comes. Okay, I'm hold on. Morgan, do you, do you, are you following the script? Are you making no. this up? I freaking got nervous. Like I'm waiting <laughs> for another loop to be thrown at me. My hands are sweaty right now. <laughs> Here's Spike. I love it. Melissa Elam. We're we're gonna do this until Morgan gets it right. So Melissa, I want you to do the return card. Go. Oh, oh mercy. Hello. Yes, I'm here. Who is this? Melissa Elam. Yeah, you called me. Oh, hold up. You told so you said return card, so I was trying to pull that one up. <laughs> Abby Edwards. Hi, Abby. Sam. You know, Abby, I, I'm just I'm laughing because the <laughs> here. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Hold on a second. Let me compose. What? Yeah. <laughs> so your background still lets us see what's going on. You. Just so you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you want to? No, no. I'm, I'm laughing. It's just funny. Okay. Let's, Abby, I was just laughing about it. You don't have to do this. Okay. Melissa, are you ready? Okay. okay so this is with the the, the referrals. Is that what I said? Yes. I did? Okay. I, am I intimidating everybody here? I don't understand what's happening. Yes. You are. It's like the class's confidence has just dropped. And I'm old, and I still remember that I said the return card, right? It's because, like I told Casey, Casey yesterday was being a bully. Now you're the bully. <laughs> I'm, I'm not being a bully. I'm trying to show you what actually happens on the <laughs> phone. So when it happens to you... You're not shocked, okay? Return card, return card. All right, Tiffy, we got you, return card. That's awesome. So I don't want to intimidate anybody. I'm not doing this to be mean okay. or be a bully. I'm trying to show you what actually happens on phone calls. Melissa, okay. let's save Morgan's bacon. Go. Hi, Sam. Hello, Sam. Yeah, hello. Hi, my name is Melissa. I'm with the Veteran Division of American Income working in cooperation with California VSO. How are you? I'm, I don't know what, VSO, what are you talking about? The veterans, I'm, see Nick got me off. All right, no worries. Melissa, everyone stop, everyone breathe. Uh, we're having a little bit of fun here, but I am pointing out to you that you have to know the script. You have to be able to accommodate if somebody acts a certain way on the call okay in the script it says state and then it says vso so what you're doing is you're saying as an example the state of california vfw okay most of these veterans will know the acronyms and if they don't then you say what the acronym is if they don't know what a vso is you say the veteran service organization 
Okay. Okay. So we're going to give you a break, Melissa. We're still looking for somebody to save Morgan. We're looking for someone to save Morgan. Les Satterfield. Are you going to be the hero today and save Morgan Blackford? Oh, heck no. I ain't, I ain't no hero. Come on, Les. Help me out, man. You got this. Shoot, I don't either. I just, like read it. I just read this for the first time. Okay. All right. Don't worry about it. You're fine. No. I'll pick somebody else. I don't want to put pressure on anyone. I mean, I'll, I'll, start I'll start it out. I'll start it out. All right. All right. All right let's go ahead. Do the referral script for me, Les. Go. Oh, the referral? <laughs> Which one are you the most comfortable with? I don't know. I thought we was talking about the R RC script. Think that we're want, then do the RC script, Les. Go. Okay. <clears throat> Hold up. Hold up. Uh, ring, ring. Hello. Uh, is this Samuel? No, it's not. You must have the wrong number. All right. So you don't see how easy it is to mess me up? Okay, no worries. We're going to look for someone else to save the bacon here. Somebody's going to save the bacon. Let's go with India Jones is going to save the bacon. India Jones is going to save the bacon. India Jones is going to save the bacon. I'm coming. That was so oh, funny. Okay. All right. Here we go. Oh, Are you ready? As ready as I'm going to be. Well, Hi, Sam. Sam? Hello? Who is this? Hi, Sam. My name is India. I'm with the Veterans Division of American Income, working in cooperation with California's VFW. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for asking. I'm calling because you recently received a letter about your group death benefit and filled out a three by five card naming your sister, Karen, as your beneficiary. Do you remember filling out that card? No, I didn't fill out any card. Are you sure you no. got the right person? I do, I do have the right person. It's no problem though. Uh, let me confirm the information that you wrote down. You wrote down your address is one, two, three, four. Is that correct? Yeah, that's my address. Perfect. You wrote down your date of birth is one, two, three, four. Is that correct? Uh, as far, yeah, I get, yeah, that's correct. But I'm telling you, I didn't turn in any card. Well, what's this Perfect. all about? Well, the reason I'm calling is that your benefits have been processed and it's my job to issue your burial guide. But most importantly, explain the VA burial benefits that you and your family are entitled to receive. Uh, now, Sam, are you currently working or are you retired? Well, I'm actually retired, but are, are these for veteran benefits? Is that what you're saying? They are. They're for veterans benefits. Oh, gotcha. I'm not a veteran, so fortunately, I guess I don't qualify. Well, that's all right. Um, well, your beneficiary is a veteran, and they felt like you were a great candidate to extend their benefits to you. Oh, so they told you to call me? Yeah, they spoke really highly of you, too. All right. All right, stop. <laughs> India, <laughs> what about you? you? You've taken three scripts now, and you've put them all together. You did a, what's the guy's name? Steven? Stefan? Where are you at? Where's the, there he is, Steven Van Epps. You put all this together. It's a return card script, and you started giving me the referral, and the beneficiary gave me, you got confused. Am I right? Or what do you mean putting it all together? She took, she started off with the return card script and then yeah. I gave her a section and she started to bring in the referral. Oh, because script. I said to extend the benefits. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a different one. Okay. Okay. So you did not save the bacon. No problem, though. I appreciate you trying. I get that. That's okay, awesome. so what should I have said after Oh, that? I don't know. We're going to find out because somebody's going to do it, right? I'm confident somebody's going to do it right. We're going to go with, 
Uh, the class, you can either choose Rachel Foley or Rachel Rachel. Which one of you or who do you want to do this? Rachel Foley or Rachel Rachel? Everyone put Rachel their hand Foley up for Rachel. Rachel Rachel. Rachel Rachel. Everyone Rachel. put your hand up if you want Rachel Rachel to do this. I see one, take my hand down. One, two, three, four, four, five. How many people want Rachel Foley to do this? One, two, three, four. And Rachel, Rachel, yours doesn't count. So it's you, Rachel, Rachel. You can't vote for somebody else because you're on that. Casey says you're both on my team and you're great. No pressure. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Do you want the RC? The I don't know. I'm just answering the phone. I don't know what the heck you're calling me about. Okay. Ring, ring. Hello? Hi, Sam. Yeah? Who is this? Hi, Sam. My name is Rachel. I'm with the Veteran Division of American Income. I'm working in cooperation with your local veteran service organization. How are you doing today? Um, I'm doing okay. I'm sorry. You're with who? I'm with the Veteran Division of American Income. I work alongside the local veteran service organizations. I'm calling in regards to the burial guide and will kit for veterans that you requested in October. It looks like you used the security keyword vet. You remember filling that out? No, I didn't fill anything out like that. Hey, I appreciate you reaching out to me, but you got the wrong person. All right. I just want to verify your address real quick. It looks like you put down one, two, four, five. Well, that is my address, but that's, I didn't fill this out. Okay. Is it possible that your spouse filled it out for you? <sighs> Jill, always doing this to me. Yeah, it's possible. Jill may have done this. All right. No problem. I'll back you up and fill you in on what's going on. Veteran families across the okay, state of Texas. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is it, okay. I have failed this class. I have failed this class. I'll back you up. Is I'll that what the script says? I'll back up. Oh, you'll back up. Is that what the script says? What does the script actually say? It says I'll back up and fill you in on what's going on. Okay. Is that different than I'll back you up? Did I say I'll back you up? I don't know. Class, did she say I'll back you up? No, she said I'll back up. She she was reading the script. She said I'll back up. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Tiffany, Tiffany is the best classmate because she's going to cover for you no matter <laughs> it, I mean, maybe she did I, I, I'll back up oh this is awesome you know what uh, I think you saved Morgan's bacon I'm going to give you a pass she on did. Pass you because I know I'm old I get it I got all this gray going on but I'm confident she said I'll back you up <sighs> I don't know. Like, yeah. like, girl, I'll back you up too. I think somebody no should do you. Pause later because it's you recorded it. <laughs> it's all my fault. You're right. All right. So, hey, today's been a really good day in terms of practicing the script. I know we don't always get as much time as we want to practice. You're going to have an opportunity to do this more and more uh, with your upline, which is great. But the best practice you can possibly have is to make calls. Right. You, we can sit here all day. I can give you a hard time. I can push back. You can push back. That's all great. It means nothing until you actually make calls and you have people answer the phone and you have to do this live. Okay. That's when it matters. That's when you get your best practice. So tonight I want to encourage all of you that you need to have your upline give you access to the lead pack and it's in their interest to think about what's happening. Let's say there's three of you and you have the same upline. That's three people who are going to call on leads. That's good for that upline, right? Because they're having phone calls made on their behalf. So it's in their interest to allow you to do that. That's number one. Number two, it's in your interest because you need the practice. You need to know what it's like to do that grind of making X amount of phone calls and having no one answer or somebody answers and they're jackass like Sam or they're really a nice person. They're like, yeah, sure, I'll take an appointment. You need to go through that in order to experience it. So you please start making phone calls tonight. So we did that. We talked about rebuttals. We know how to overcome some rebuttals, a few of them. I listed a number of them that are kind of the most prevalent. There are going to be a bunch out there. You're going to be people who curse, people who don't want to be nice, whatever. Just roll with it. Remember, you're having a conversation. The worst thing that could possibly happen is what? They don't want an appointment. So you hang up 
and you move on to the next one, right? Some will, some won't, so what? Doesn't matter. You're going to get to the next one. Don't get discouraged, okay? Now, tomorrow, we're going to talk about the referrals, and we're actually going to have somebody in whose name is Ryan Cummings. Anybody know Ryan Cummings? Anybody? Nobody? No? Ryan Cummings is Ashley Rust's brother. And Ashley Russ was the number one person in all of American Income Life in 2019. So she's really good at what she does. He's very good as well. He's building out his team. That's what he's focusing on. I'm going to facilitate a discussion with him tomorrow about referrals, why referrals are so important. And we'll talk about the program where we give you additional incentives for selling to referrals. Okay. Now, I see a hand raised. Rachel Foley, we do know that Morgan's covered, so we're not doing role play anymore. What is your question? Well, it's just kind of in regards to one of your responses to the um, both the PA vet and the RC vet um, uh, scripts. I, I know at one point you said that you uh, weren't a vet, um, but really we're only calling if we get like the either the um, the RC card in or the PA vet form in what would be the best response in that case? So if I called you and I thought I was talking to you and you were a vet, I thought, and you told me you weren't a vet. Mm -hmm. Okay. I so I would ask the team. And I say, you know, I'm not a vet. Why are you calling? Right. I, so I, I would then ensure that I got the information that I have available to me and confirm it. But sort of like what India did. Is your address the one, two, three, four? It's the pad that I'm confirming the email and the address, I'm sorry, the email address and the physical address. So I wanna show credibility and confirm that this is accurate. Oh, you're not the vet? I'm so sorry, was somebody in your house the vet? Because somebody filled this out and put your name in. Oh, my wife is, or my son is, or whatever, right? And if it turns out they're not a vet at all, no one's a vet in there, then obviously they don't need the information. Okay, sure? so let's move on, I'm sorry for, yeah, you know. Yeah, hey, it looks like we got a mix up, let's move on. That'll very rarely happen it will happen more where people will say, well, I'm not interested. I thought I was just going to get an email with a bunch of information. Okay. And in that case, you can say, well, once we walk through this all to you, I will send you an email with all of this information for the benefits that we just enrolled you in and that you're entitled to receive. Okay. Sounds okay. great. All right. Awesome. You wouldn't still try to sell them like insurance, Sam? Sure, you could, but here's the problem that you have. You're not be, you're not going to have the ability to build on anything to start with. You're going to, yeah. it's basically, you're going to sell coal. And that's called, and you guys don't have to worry about any of this, but that's called a hard card. That's where you're selling to somebody who has no marketing input or received no marketing from AIL to get engaged with us. Right. So I know nothing about you. And I'm saying, okay, Abby, let's start from scratch. Right. Do you have any children? I can go down the child safe kit. Do you have any family, friends in the military? Well, here's what they can get. You know, you can give me information for them that I can get to them. Have you ever considered life insurance for yourself? It's a very difficult sell. And because you're in the veteran market, we would prefer that if there is no veteran, it was a mistake, move away, let it go and go on to the next one. Because We've given you the tool set so that if you do get the veteran and their family on, it's easy for you to follow the script and go through it. If I had to teach you now how to sell to somebody who absolutely has no marketing reach or outreach from us, it takes a lot longer, a lot okay. longer, because you have to come and, up with valid reasons about why you're having the conversation. Mm -hmm. And would you do, like, how would you put that in mobile uh, planet? Mobile planet, like bad phone number or the like. Well, if I'm whatever. making the call and they say that, I would say yeah. uh, no answer. And I would put a note in the comment field that says they indicated they're not a veteran. And then I'd ask my upline, do you want me to resolve this or do you want to call that person? Okay. But if it was me, if I was doing it for myself, I could just resolve it so that they're off you my would resolve list. it and say not interested or refuse presentation. Okay easily and then they, they move out and move on so they're okay. off okay yeah any other questions for me i can't believe you all don't have any additional questions for me i just i let me see the chat we're talking about husband ah that was pretty funny i got a question that hilarious. that's all 
Anyway, uh, no questions for me. I want to stick around, obviously, like I usually do for a few minutes afterward. You can't hear me. I don't understand my mic was. <laughs> Say that again, Tiffany? Yes, I have a question. Okay, what is it? Um, quick. So let's say we have somebody who would like to buy life insurance that's not a veteran and they want to specifically buy it from us. Uh -huh. We refer them. How would we? So do I just get with somebody offline about that? Are they in your state? Yes. Do you have your license? Well, yeah. Okay, then you can sell to them. Okay. Right? And what you then do is you don't have to go through all the other stuff to get somebody interested and then transition into the life insurance discussion. You can actually jump right into the pre plan. Right? Okay. And show okay. them, you know, here's what I can do for you based on what you're telling me. And you would ask questions like, how much coverage do you have a house? Do we need to worry about that? How much do you need to set aside for funeral following expenses? Do you have children? All of those things, which would then help you decide how much coverage they need. And then gotcha. you're going to balance the amount of coverage with their budget. Gotcha. Okay. Awesome. Sounds good. Thank you. I think Morgan did a good job. I gave her a little bit of a hard time, but I do that from time to time. It's not directed at anybody. I hope, yeah, I don't want to offend anybody. I'm not a bully, but I do want everyone to experience what it's like on various phone calls when people aren't being uh, helpful for you to get through your script. Okay. So I want everyone to make phone calls tonight. Uh, do write alongs if they're available practice note that this is thursday so one of the things you should be practicing tonight is your script a1 through a5 because you're going to have to actually do it on camera record it to me or record it for me and then send it to me and your manager or whoever your upline is by saturday night if you don't send it to your manager or if they don't want to see it or if they don't have the time to see it that's fine i do so i'm looking at everybody's uh recordings Sunday morning. I wake up, brush teeth, get the, you know, take shot, and then I start reviewing everybody's A1 through A5. Okay? So that's the game plan. That's what we have going on. Thank you so much for joining me tonight, or this afternoon, this morning, whatever it is for everybody. I have one last question from Casey Neal. Of course I do. Casey, <laughs> what is your what question? Is your question? So my question is, when it comes to recording it, do we just record it on Zoom here? And I'm not familiar with Zoom very well. So, you know, do we run through the whole school like we're talking to someone, we record it, and then what we send it to you like that? Uh, the short answer is yes. So what happens is, is that you can either role play with somebody on Zoom and record yourself and them, right, while you're doing it, like one of your classmates, or you can not have anybody role play, but you're going to treat it as if you're talking to somebody. And you're going to go through the entire process, the entire pitch. You're going to turn your camera off when it says to turn it off. You're going to share your screen. You're going to pause your sharing at the appropriate time while you're building your three plans. And then you're going to unpause and then show me the first plan all the way through. Well, okay. actually, those are the plans. The A1 through A5 ends after you get all the referrals in the family information guide and you show me the freedom of choice certificate, that's when it ends. So I'm sorry, you don't have to show me all your uh, options and all that. Okay, does that answer your question? It does, perfectly. Thank you for your time. Well, look at that, Tiffany Baker says anybody wanna practice, she's down. Anyway, thank you all so much for joining me today. I will see you tomorrow at nine o'clock Pacific Daylight Time. <laughs>